Hi, Epic Recaps here, and today I am going to explain to you a 2021 drama thriller titled The Unforgivable. If you want to be spoiled, keep watching. The movie begins and a woman named Ruth Slater is released from prison after serving time for murder. Packing up her belongings, she spent the years behind bars writing countless letters to her sister Katie. In a series of flashbacks, Ruth is seen caring for her over the years as well as the events leading up to the murder of the sheriff. Upon her release, Ruth is met by her parole officer Vince Cross, who goes over the conditions of her release and warns her not to try to amends for her crime. Meanwhile, Keith, the eldest son of the sheriff, has found out about Ruth's release and begins stalking her. In the car, when Ruth tells him she has a carpentry job lined up, Cross warns her it won't be that easy and gives her the number of another contact who's hiring. Dropping her off at a group home, he tells her he'll be by every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Inside, the house manager gives her a tour and explaining the house rules, she introduces her to her new roommates. Elsewhere, a grown-up Katie, who goes by Catherine Malcolm, barely remembers Ruth, and during a flashback of her own, she gets into a car accident. Awakening in a hospital bed, she's surrounded by her adoptive father and sister, Michael and Emily, who fuss over her and asks if she's been taking her medication. Her adoptive mother Rachel enters, and her parents insist that she move back home to recover. Outside the hospital room, Rachel worries that Ruth's release is somehow connected to Katie's accident, and worries that the ex-con will come looking for her. Michael reassures her that she has nothing to worry about and that the accident was just that, an accident. Elsewhere, Keith tracks down his brother Steve and bitterly gripes about Ruth's early release. Sharing her current location in Chinatown, He's determined to plot revenge but is unable to get his younger brother Steve on board, who tells him to leave it alone. Back at the group home, Ruth receives an anonymous phone call. The person on the other end of the line calls her a cop killer, to which Ruth responds by hanging up the phone. Returning to her room, Ruth finds one of her roommates breaking the no-stealing rule, and is rummaging through her bag. Ruth attacks the roommate and forces her to leave the room, recovering an old photo of Katie. The scene changes to Keith who is at home and caring for his ailing mother. Meanwhile, Steve prepares to leave for the day and is called back by his wife. Giving his daughter and wife Hannah a kiss, it's clear that the two brothers live unhappy and unfulfilling lives. Meanwhile, Ruth awakens in her bunk bed and her thoughts drift to Katie. In a flashback, Ruth is screaming at a bank employee who's arrived to take possession of their farmhouse. The sheriff arrives to to keep the peace and is next seen lying on the ground in a pool of blood. Back to the present day, Liz and John Ingram are the current owners of the renovated farmhouse and live there with their two sons Ryan and Daniel. In the middle of a family dispute, Liz is interrupted by the electrician who discovers a pair of baby shoes in the wall. Telling them some people leave shoes in walls to protect them from evil spirits, she instructs the man to put them back and leaves for work. Arriving for her first day at work as a carpenter, Ruth is told by the lead foreman that no job position exists. Out of options, she ends up working at a fish factory Cross had recommended and scrubs herself from the stench after a full day of work. Heading to the library, Ruth attempts to track down Katie, but doesn't know what she looks like nor is she able to find any information about her adoption. She does however stumble on an article reporting the sale of the farmhouse and decides to make a visit. Ruth makes the arduous trek to her old home and all the while has visions of Katie as a child. Arriving outside, she remembers the day clearly as the sheriff offers her and Katie shelter at his house. Ruth, who's underage and unable to care for Katie, refuses the offer, knowing that Katie will be taken from her. Inside, Liz notices Ruth and calls John to investigate the strange woman standing outside. When he approaches her and asks if she's a neighbor, Ruth tells him she did some work on the house. Mentioning the hut she built in the entryway, he invites her in and introduces her to Liz. Ruth is overcome with a flood of memories and when Liz peppers her with questions about the previous owners, Ruth is vague in her answers. When John mentions the shoes they found in the wall, Ruth denies knowing about it but her gaze immediately falls to its location which gives John pause. No longer able to compose herself, she quickly thanks the couple and rushes out. John follows her and offering her a ride to the bus station, Ruth asks him what type of law he practices. He's caught off guard for a moment and when he tries to get Ruth to tell him the truth about why she came, she tells him that the house was the last place she lived with her sister before Katie was placed in foster care and eventually adopted. Getting out of the car, 
John is sympathetic and offers to help Ruth track down her sister. Back at her parents' house, Katie is being doted on and when Michael and Rachel head out for work, she confesses to Emily that she stopped taking her meds and has been experiencing flashbacks. Unable to make out who the woman is, Emily suggests they look for her but Katie is not interested in digging up her painful past. Ruth makes her way back to the group home, when a chapel undergoing renovations catches her eye. Inside, she's told that they're not hiring but the foreman quickly changes his mind when Ruth impresses him with her knowledge. When Cross checks in, he asks if she disclosed her criminal history. She answers no, and laments that the label doesn't have to follow her everywhere. He corrects her and tells her the label cop killer will indeed follow her and she'd do well to remember that. Meanwhile, John learns the truth about Ruth's past as he listens to the multiple messages she's left him. Assuming he's done a background check on her, Ruth confesses her story and pleads for his help, only wanting to meet Katie's parents to know that her sister is okay. Back at the house, Liz asks the contractor about the previous owners. Surprised that she didn't know the history, he tells her that Ruth and Katie's dad killed himself and when the bank came to evict the girls, Ruth shot and killed the sheriff. When John arrives home, Liz tells him what she learned and is livid when he tells her he already knows and has agreed to help her locate her sister. Elsewhere at a retirement party for a family friend, Steve watches as Hannah flirts with the other cops as well as his brother. An old friend approaches Steve and asks him to pass along Ruth's work address to his brother. Angry that he is still stirring things up, the brothers argue and Steve, who was too young to remember, listens as Keith blames their mother's alcoholism and losing the family home on Ruth's actions. Afterward, Steve visits his ailing mother, and looking at old family photos, he pays Ruth a visit at the chapel. Posing as a delivery man, Steve chats her up and mentions her parents. When Ruth states that they are dead, he apologizes and she shrugs, telling him life goes on. When Ruth leaves, Steve stays behind and goes through her belongings, discovering the existence of Katie when he finds a photograph of her. Later, he meets his brother Keith and has a change of heart, he agrees that everything bad that's happened to them is because of Ruth. Meanwhile, Michael receives a letter from John who is now representing Ruth and requests a meeting with the couple. When he mentions it to Rachel, she thinks they should meet with her, but he disagrees. Mentioning the letters from Ruth, she manages to convince him it's in Katie's best interest and they agree to call the lawyer, unaware that Emily is listening in. At work, Ruth begins to open up and develops a friendship with her co-worker Blake. At a diner, Ruth confesses that she was recently released from prison for murdering a sheriff. When Blake is at a loss for words, she gets up and leaves, fighting to hold back tears. The next day at work, a co-worker attacks her, and the woman tells Ruth her dad was a cop. Outcasted, Ruth feels more alone than ever and brushes off Blake when he wants to talk. Meeting Cross by the water, she tells him to save his lecture, and that she's learned her lesson the hard way. Looking at her face, he doesn't doubt it and tells Ruth that her lawyer arranged a sit-down with Katie's parents, giving her a glimpse of hope. After school, Emily discovers the house empty and searches for the letter she overheard her parents mention. Meanwhile, Ruth meets with the Malcolms and finds out that Michael and Rachel have deliberately not told Katie about her and have withheld all of the letters that she wrote during her years in prison. Having decided what's best for Katie, they think she's better off not knowing or remembering Ruth. Accusing them of burning her letters, Ruth suffers an outburst of emotion and the Malcolms angrily storm out of the room. When Rachel denies burning her letters, Ruth refuses to give up on her sister and begs them to tell Katie about her. Back home, Emily reads through the old letters and is moved to tears by Ruth's words. At the same time, Katie, who's haunted by the same familiar memory, cries alone in front of a mirror. The following day at work, Blake approaches her and apologizes, revealing that he was recently released from prison as well, and based on the terms for parole, their relationship is forbidden. Making her way home, Ruth receives a call from Emily who tells her she has read her letters and wants to meet. The next morning, Steve, who's been watching Ruth, sees her leave and follows her. Emily arrives at the botanical park and listens as Ruth recounts Katie's childhood. Before leaving, Emily tells her that Katie is a pianist and has a rehearsal at the local auditorium later that day. Ruth is unable to hide her joy and calls John to get legal advice, not wanting to jeopardize the meeting. Meanwhile, Steve, who's followed Ruth to the park, keeps up with Emily, whom he thinks is Katie, and discovers her address. Arriving home, 
Steve comforts his crying baby and discovers Keith and Hannah and B together. Staring at them in disgust, he runs out and heads to his mother's house where he takes Keith's gun. Unable to get a hold of John, Ruth frantically makes her way to the farmhouse looking for him but instead is confronted by a furious Liz, who tells her to leave and is unable to see why her husband believes she deserves a second chance. In response, Ruth repeats over and over that Katie was only five years old. Through flashbacks, it is revealed that it was the five-year-old Katie who had actually fired the shot that had killed the sheriff. Learning the truth, Liz feels sympathetic towards Ruth and drives her to the recital. On the way there, Ruth relives her final moments with her sister, telling her she'll always love her. Arriving at the recital, she receives a phone call from Steve who tells her he is Katie at gunpoint. He instructs her to meet him at the harbor, and when Ruth tells him not to harm her sister, he tells her life goes on. She tells Liz the meet location has changed and the pair head to the harbor. Arriving, Liz gets suspicious and Ruth tells her someone has kidnapped Katie and leaves to meet Steve. Liz, who stays in the car, makes a call to the authorities. When Ruth and Steve come face to face, she sees Emily on the ground and pleads for her life. When Steve aims a gun at Emily and threatens to kill her, the scene switches to Katie who is playing the piano. After Ruth expresses sorrow and remorse for all that has happened and tells him life does not go on as she previously said, instead, you leave everyone you love behind. Fighting with himself, he is unable to go through with it. Ruth helps Emily out of the room and is prepared to take a bullet for Emily with Steve still holding the gun. The two stare at each other and Ruth goes back to the time she turned herself in for Katie. Back to the present, she walks out with her hands up and is arrested again, along with Steve. At the recital, Michael gets a call and Katie, who has finished playing, smiles as she recalls a memory of Ruth caressing her face. Cross arrives at the scene and gets Ruth released into his custody. As Ruth begins to walk away with Vince, she turns and sees Katie, who slowly approaches her. Within arm's reach, Ruth pulls her into a hug and Katie has finally found the missing piece of herself in Ruth's arms. Let us know what your thoughts on the film in the comments below. If you want to watch another gut-wrenching movie, check out the next recap about a man who fights to get back the only thing that really matters in his life.